Okay. Well, I'm going to cram as much information as I can into this video. I'm just kind of winging it, so I'm probably going to leave out some information and I might skip around a little bit, but what this has to do with is shaft projectiles and uh, uh, the association of possibly the atlatl spear and the uh, introduction or invention of the bow and arrow in the North American continent. Now, uh, they say that uh, the bow and arrow has been around roughly... Uh, Two to three thousand years old and possibly older and, and, and possibly it came about either by uh, uh, invented separately or introduced later on at different time periods and uh, in order to talk about the bow uh, I'm gonna have to stop and talk about the atlatl spear shafts and just shafts uh, projectiles in general and uh, uh, over the years, I've been I've been doing this for 30 plus years now, and I've, I've developed a uh, a uh, category for uh, all the different types of spear shafts. And basically, there's only uh, three types of shafts. Uh, you got your javelin double tapered. That's the they're thicker in the middle and they taper towards each end. And you got the single tapered, and that's the most common. It's uh, bigger at the front end and it tapers to the the back end and those are usually made out of uh, uh you know saplings and and tree type you know like river cane stuff like that and then you have the cylinder shaft which basically is almost non-existent in nature and it's very difficult to make a complete uh, cylinder shaft that's the same diameter from end to end that's kind of more of modern or historical archery that uses that. And each one of those have a, has a different flight characteristic. Uh, when you throw a javelin by hand or even or with an atlatl, uh, when it flies through there, it flexes on both the ends. And uh, uh, they've been using the javelin for thousands and thousands of years, and they still use them in the uh, Olympics to this day. They haven't really changed too much, and what makes them such long range uh, hunting weapons or, or shafts is the centrifugal force of that that vibration as it flies through the air. As long as that holds, the further it'll go, the centrifugal force brings it up and and that's why they can throw them so far. I think the Olympics, the, the Olympic world record is uh, 107 yards by hand. Now, I don't have any javelins with me today. I have made quite a few over the years. Uh, yeah, but uh, most of what I throw is the single tapered and the single tapered is uh, the only the only way you can throw it effectively is with a nat ladle because it all the vibration is on the, the back end of the uh, shaft so when you try to throw it by hand it, you can't get enough flex out of it so they kind of do different things uh, the cylinder shaft like I say it really doesn't even exist in nature, and it, uh, uh, in order to uh, to get those to fly right, you have to add fletchings or a drag to kind of keep it because the whole entire thing, if you don't have a, a rudder on the back, it it'll get a, uh, have a erratic flight with that. Uh, uh, the javelin is the only type of shaft that you can throw by hand. Uh, uh, single tapered shafts, you know, that's like your river canes and other or the other shaft materials. And that was the most common used type of shafts in certain areas. Uh, the type of shafts that were used by prehistoric uh, natives was uh, dictated kind of by where they were hunting and what they were hunting. For instance, uh, if you were hunting uh, bison and kind of open prairies and plains uh, you'd want something that was long range and because you just can't walk up really and just spear bison you know at 20 yards or what have you see so they was hunting at long ranges and uh, in order to get them to go that far they uh, had to design them that way and uh, they also designed 
projectile points to fit the the same uh, design. All across in North America, especially out west in the Great Plains and the prairie regions from paleo times, you know, all the way up to shooting the late archaic periods, they designed these jab or these uh, lancelet type points to fit the taper of the shaft. The shaft tapers down and they make a perfect fit. And they 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 range from, you know, five inch or six inch. You could throw some some big long points depending on the, the, the shaft that you're showing. And all the way down to smaller things, even all the way down to little Folsom size. But uh, javelin shafts are long range, low velocity sp uh, spear shafts. In other words, when if you're throwing them at a long, long ways, by the time they get there, they slow down so much that they don't have a lot of penetrating power so they designed the point uh, narrow to uh, get maximum penetration uh, that's why you don't find too many or a lot of uh, lancelet type projectile points in wooded areas you know the hills and the hollers you find more of the uh, wider varieties uh, there are different sizes. I've come up with uh, different calibers of basically of spear shafts. You have the javelin, you got the ot one, two, three, four, possibly a five. And uh, the five would be the big stuff, you know, and, and that would be a true lance. You could probably throw it a little ways, but they usually get too pretty heavy and that, when you're talking about a five you're talking about a shaft that's probably one and three quarters two inch in diameter uh, and then you got the little ot size all the way down to you know maybe three quarters of an inch and you can throw those with a nat ladle you can throw little small projectile points attached to those like Folsom points and, and a lot of your other smaller lancet type points uh, the single tapered this type I got them listed from a ot all the way up to a three. This is a, a number three single tapered shaft. It's all seven and a half feet long. And they're high velocity at close range, but because of the weight, uh, you can't throw them that far. Now, these come in a lot of different sizes. Like I say, all the way down to ones or odd actually, an odd is, is, is a very small shaft uh, that you can throw very, very small projectile points. And and a lot of cases, you know, in areas where, uh, you know, they got river cane and other materials that they can make uh, shaft projectiles out of, they, because of the lack of the biggest, big material, they have to, to go small. So they, they make those in a number of sizes. And these are really super high, uh, high velocity at close range. And because of their small size and their weight, these are normally, they usually have to have fletchings on the end to uh, control them in flight. Uh, on the longer stuff, you go long and you, uh, and, and at close range, ranges you really don't have to have fletchings on the end I mean you can make these shafts all the way out to up to 10 or 12 feet long uh, you know seven seven eight foot that's a good good size for me anyhow that's what I've adjusted to deadly deadly stuff right here like I say it's all close range maybe you're talking 15, 20 yards max. You get some of the smaller stuff, put some fletchings on them, and you can get a little bit further than that. But, uh, you know, there's a lot to the velocity, how fast you throw it, the, the mass, you know, uh, the size of the point. It all dictates down to, uh, you know, the situations where you're hunting. 
and the, and the shaft material sometimes dictates what you, what you got. With River King, uh, this is just a demonstration piece. Now I use, uh, most of the time I use the detachable four shafts for my River King type shafts, but you can also attach projectile points directly to the to the shaft itself. Uh, like I say, the flight characteristics kind of dictate how far and everything that you can throw these. Uh, high, high and low velocity, the closer you are, the faster it flies, the farther it goes out, the, 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 you know, the less velocity it has and less impact penetrating power. Uh, the weight of the point, you know, there's a lot of factors involved. Uh, the haft element, how you haft these points up. Uh, the spine, you know, and that's very important. Uh, that's the flex, how much a shaft will flex in flight. If it's too stiff, they don't fly right, and if they're too flimsy, they, they get erratic flight. With atlatls, uh, I most generally don't use atlatl weights with my atlatls, but I have had situations where I needed it. Uh, when you first cut shafts, it takes a little while for these things to season out and get a good spine to them, and they're a little green, and they're a little bit too flexible. And they got a weak spine to them. And it's very hard and very difficult to control the, your power output when you throw a, a spear with an atlatl. You want to use, you want to throw it as hard as you can every time, and 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 instead of trying to, you know, throw it hard at something way out there and not so hard up close, you want to keep that consistency because it'll change that spine. And if you get a shaft that's too flimsy, you can make it work by adding a weight to your thrower. And basically what that does, it slows your forward momentum down. And when it slows your forward momentum down, it lessens the bow that will be created in that shaft. And you can move a weight up and down a shaft and speed up or slow down that forward momentum. So in other words, you can tune a, a shaft by adding a, add a lot of weight to it. Man, I tell you, I just, there's so much stuff to talk about here uh, you know like I say this is kind of meant mainly for the bow the you know primitive bow in North America and uh, I've made bows since I was a little kid you know off of a tree limb and some binder twine and you know shot horse weeds and over the years I I got uh, skilled enough where I've made probably two or three dozen different types of bows flat bows long bows uh, you know, uh, the older I get, the more I mess with it, uh, the more I'm getting more, even more and more primitive. Uh, and most of my bows I make are just sapling bows. I go cut a sapling and, uh, you know, work one end down and they make some good bows. As a matter of fact, I had a big, long, uh, hickory javelin at one point that I threw and I ended up making a, a bow out of that thing and it worked really good. Uh, I've done some, some uh, you know, fine work, you know, uh, like I say, making flat bows and tillering them out and shooting them, some, some true killers. And uh, I got to uh, looking at, uh, you know, prehistoric uh, projectile points that I find. And uh, during the Woodlands period here in, in Missouri, at least in North Missouri, that they, they claim that the the bow and arrow was either invented or or introduced a whole couple thousand years ago. And anything for that is just an atlatl spear point. But I actually find uh, projectile points that are kind of in between the arrow point size and the atlatl spear point size that suggests that the early middle woodlander, maybe even older, uh, people were practicing or messing with uh, trying out some archery stuff and developed a bow. Uh, 
there's some that's just these would uh, need to be put on a pretty thick heavy shaft and a long shaft uh, in order to get it fly right and then the same with these little ones this is the most common type of size arrow point you'll find basically across North America and you can look at the size of these uh, points and the weight and it can kind of tell you the, actually the length of the arrows that they were shooting this is a 40 incher out of river cane and I've shot them a lot a lot longer than that uh, a lot of your natives around the the world still shoot extremely long bows and extremely long arrows with arrows all the way up to five to six feet long uh, the, the, the deal with that is is when you in archery when you pull a, a, a bow back the center of gravity has to be at the hand when you release it well that's a kind of a long draw length and the weight would have been too lightweight and it would have had a really weak spine to it so you leave extra arrow hanging over the front and that makes up for the weight this part of the shaft plus the point becomes the whole total weight so in, in prehistoric archery in my opinion uh, the first development of it they shot very long arrow shafts and quite possibly these were evolved from small atlatl spear shafts. Here's another. This is a river cane with a detachable fore shaft. Very lightweight. These things were probably hung way over the bow, maybe a foot or two uh, to get them to fly right. They're very lightweight, super high velocity. That goes the same for Atlas spear shafts. This is a close range, high velocity Atlas spear shaft in aught size. This is the aught, and this is about as small as you're going to get. This, this particular shaft, six foot long, and I I kind of think that they were playing around uh, and found them a stick maybe tied it on their spear, their javelin, or maybe an atlatl shaft, like I did, or maybe you did when you was a kid, and you made those little little bows, you know, that shot horse weeds, and they, it took them a long time to develop and figure something out that would, that, that made those effective. Now, this is no doubt probably an atlatl spear point, and it's probably a inch and three quarters long, but it would function as an arrow, arrow point so I'm not saying that they these were actually used arrow points but I think sometime along the line there they were trying to develop the, the bow and arrow and it took them a long time to, to come down to uh, this size right here uh, and it continued to develop after that plumb up until a white man contact and a lot of the uh, advancements in primitive archery came about after after white contact, I believe, especially like fletchings. Uh, for the most part, you don't need fletchings on atlatl spear shafts or arrows, uh, you know, in close range hunting conditions. Actually, they, they uh, fletchings, they kind of act like a rudder, you know, and, and does some correcting for you, but they also slow things down. So if you get everything tuned in right, you do not need fletchings, none whatsoever for close range uh, Honey, I'm talking out to 15, 20 yards. So, I got to doing a little thinking. And uh, I thought, what would be the best way to, uh, to make the most primitive bow that I could come up with that involved uh, atlatls? So, what I come up with was an atlatl spear shaft. These are number one, number one atlatl spear shafts. 
roughly five and a half, six foot long. All bound together. Bundle bows, what they call these. And the, uh, you know, you can use whatever for your cordy, you know, your, your bow string, you know, lots of material, you know, uh, dog bane and sinew, and you can, you can, uh, there's just a lot of different things you can make uh, functional uh, bow strings out of. So I'm not going to get into that, and, and really what I'm doing right here today really isn't anything, it doesn't have to do with uh, technique or uh or how much penetration I get, or how far I can shoot, or anything like that. It's just to test out and kind of show you uh, what these, what a simple primitive bow uh, can do. So I'm going to try to cut this video short, and I'm going to shoot some stuff that normally doesn't uh, get shot, and just to kind of see what the difference is. First thing I'm going to shoot is a bare shaft multi-floor rose of about 36 inches. It's pretty stiff. Now I can get this to fly pretty good if I put fletchies on it and a heavier point. But the way it is, it's got too stiff a spine. The spine is critical in everything, archery and atlatls. So we'll start shooting some stuff with this half inch sheet of plywood back here and see what kind of results we get. We'll test them out and compare with some atlatls and some other stuff. For this demonstration, I am gonna throw all known uh, modern archery techniques out the door and, and try to go back to possibly how some of the first natives shot their bows when they were first uh, developing. So we'll see what we get. This is about a five yard shot, fairly normal hunting conditions if you're a stalker or a, a really good at hunting. So I'm not expecting too much from this shaft right here. As expected. It's really stiff, kicked it out. Now, we'll go to this very lightweight river cane shaft. Also, I'm gonna shoot it bare. And there's a lot of different ways you can shoot a bow. I kind of like the old Yishi style when it comes to primitive bows. We'll see what we get out of this one. Not bad. I'm going to shoot that one again, see if we get some more. A little bit better penetration on that one. I didn't, get, I didn't have the full power on it. You wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that with one of these little doodads right here. You could probably get complete pass through on some white tailed deer with that shaft. Uh, I'm gonna stop just a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a, a shaft. This is a big old heavy shaft. This is the number two river cane shaft. This is about as big as you want to try to throw. Roughly eight foot long. It's a lot lighter than your, you know, most of your wood shafts, but we'll see what kind of penetration we get that. I'll step back just a little bit more. See what kind of penetration we get. I can live with that. What we got here, river willow. That's one of my go-to shaft materials. It's a big old heavy thing, about as much as I can throw. You throw this a lot, you'll end up with some back and shoulder problems. But we're gonna see what this one here will do. And this is all about velocity and mass. And sometimes velocity is better than mass, and sometimes mass is better than velocity. We'll see what we got. Let's 
satisfied with that. One more time. River King. Hey, that's what I was looking for. Now, back to the bow. We'll do this the, the different technique. The bow shooting. And this is a six foot River King spear shaft. We'll see what kind of deal we get with it. I like that. I don't think you would. Uh, I don't think you'd be wanting to get on the receiving end of that, also. Try right, one more time. There we go. Like shit for a goose. And just for the heck of it, bring back old memories from when I was a kid shooting those tree limb bows. I got me a horse weed here. Fixed up. I haven't shot it yet. We'll see what it does. This bow probably pulls back, oh, I don't know, maybe 35, 40 pounds. But I'm telling you, it would be a killer. Let's see what happens. I think it'd work. possible to shoot at lateral size spear points out of a primitive bow and I mean a primitive bow I could probably beef this thing up and get those things to fly really good and I'll just try this one more time for good measure it's actually is uh, about as primitive as I can make them without just cutting a stick tying a string on it but six foot long river cane arrow that little spear shaft. And there you have it. I don't think you'd want to be on the receiving end of any of that. Thank you.